God. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for this another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. We thank you for the blessings of peace upon the World Changers Church International. We thank you for this Wednesday night crew. And Lord, we are in preparation for what is to come. We are so ready, Lord. And we thank you for your anointing that removes every burden and destroys every yoke. And we rejoice over the power of your spirit, the power of your word, and the power of your peace. We give you praise for it now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, you may be seated. And we want to welcome all of you who are online and welcome all of you who are here tonight with us live. I'm going to start a, a, a series that uh, it's going to sound a little awkward, but I'm going to talk about the, tonight and next week the reality of heaven and hell. And the reason why I believe the Spirit of God, he spoke this to my heart. He says, I want you to teach on the reality of heaven and hell. And I thought, well, well, why? Because when you talk about hell, that is a message to unbelievers. And so I'm going to deal with hell tonight. <laughs> and just so, you, just so you can take good notes so you can minister to unbelievers. But this is not for you. Let me please make sure I, you understand something. If, if you have been born again and you, you have made Jesus the Lord of your life, you are heaven bound. You are heaven bound. But if you are not born again and you're not a believer, uh, listen very carefully tonight. We hope we can change your mind. Amen? Amen. And so, Father, we do praise you. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you that uh, these words will come out correctly with love, and we give you praise for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, as we begin, right before I get into this, let's, I, want, I want to just show you, a lot of times people, you know, they come to the conclusion that certain things don't exist because it's not really kind of like preached about enough. And, it, you know, and when it's not ministered, it's not in a person's mind, and so they just kind of think it doesn't exist, or they start listening to people who don't know what they're talking about, and you absorb what they say. So before I really get started, I want to turn to the scriptures, and I want to I want to share some some things with the scripture, show you some things in the scripture, just about some of the things it says. Let's go to Matthew chapter thirteen forty two. I want to look at six scriptures, and then I'll get started. So remember, this is the reality of heaven and hell, and you're going to learn something about both existences, but you're going to be grateful that you made a decision to get born again. You have all life to make one decision, and that is the decision to make Jesus the Lord of your life. So this is a part of our understanding series, and certainly this is something that every new member needs to get a hold of. Matthew chapter 13, 42, and just listen how this goes, 1342. He says, and, and, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Uh, now, he's talking about, again, unbelievers. They'll be cast into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. It's very interesting. What do you do with that scripture? Do you tear it up and throw it away? Well, now let's go to this up next scripture I want you to see, Matthew 10, 28. Matthew 10 and 28. And these are just scriptures that you can use and, and look at. He says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both the soul and the body in hell. So here again, it makes reference to uh, hell. And, and for people who don't believe in it, 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 the scripture is very clear about making reference over and over again that there is a hell. We live in a generation now where they don't believe in heaven or hell. So I want to take time to show you the, the reality of this. Look at 2 Peter chapter 2 and 4. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 4. Now notice here he says, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but he cast them 
notice the direction, down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Now, listen what this scripture says. This scripture says that God did not spare those angels that sinned. Those, you remember that whole war in heaven and those angels that rebelled against God? God did not spare those angels that sinned, but he cast them down to hell. You're going to find out that hell was not created for us. It was created for fallen angels. It was created for the devil and those fallen angels. But that was a place that was created for the rebellious angels. And Satan, of course, was an archangel. So every rebellious angel, there was a place that was created for them. And he says, they were put in the chains of darkness, cast them down to hell. So it's a literal place. It's a literal place. It was not originally created for men. We, we have no business that, that wasn't created for us. It was created for fallen angels. Now, I thought that was the, the trump of... <laughs> let's, get, let's go. I wasn't scared, boy. I'll get ready to do my Superman. Let's go. Up, up and away. I didn't, I didn't know whether that was a soft trumpet or what, but... I'm like, that's kind of a weak trumpet, but I, I take it. We were ready, boy, one way. <laughs> Now, if you weren't ready and your heart's still beating kind of fast, you might need to listen to what I'm talking about here tonight. <laughs> okay, so I guess the next question is, let's locate it. Let's locate it according to the Word. Let's go to Psalms 9, 17, look at a couple more scriptures, and then we need to locate this. Psalms 9, verse 17. He says, the wicked shall be turned, where? Into hell and all the nations that forget God will be turned into hell. But remember, the original purpose for it was not for mankind. Look at Mark chapter 9, verse 43. Mark chapter 9 and verse 43, he says, And if, they, and if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. So there's, there's, there's too many references that are making reference to that place. And so let's, let's see if we can locate it. Ephesians chapter 4 and 9. Ephesians chapter 4 and 9. This is interesting. He says, now that he ascended, now referring to Jesus, now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended? Remember, he sent the, those, arch, those angels down. He descended first. Watch this into the lower parts of the earth. So we just, you know, this scripture tells us that this is located in the lower parts of the earth. It was created for all fallen angels and demonic forces, the lower parts of the earth. And of course, Jesus went to hell, the lower parts of the earth, for three days and three nights, okay? And the lower parts of the earth. So, um, we know where it is. We know exactly where it is. It, it is in the lower parts of the earth or Hades. Now, what I'm about to show you is something in Luke chapter 16, which was an actual event that took place. Uh, go to Luke 16, and when you get to Luke 16, and this is where I want to spend the majority of my time tonight, Luke chapter 16, I just want to give you those scriptures. And one of the reasons why I, it's important for you to get these scriptures is because when it comes to heaven, most people believe in it. And most people believe that they're going there. <laughs> On the other hand, while some people believe in hell, most don't think they're going there. Now, you're, you're living in a very interesting time now. You're living in a very interesting time where there are people that don't believe in God. They don't believe in the devil. They don't believe in hell. They don't believe in heaven. And, you know, they can live like hellions and tell them, what do you think is going to go when you die? I'm going to heaven. <laughs> well, is Jesus Lord of your life? Who? <laughs> it's not going to happen. All right, so let's look at this real carefully. Luke 16, uh, and let's begin at verse um, 19. Luke 16 and verse 19. Are you there? All right, now let's, let's break this down. 
There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and he fared sumptuously. Now, the first thing that got my attention here is that the Bible said there was a certain rich man which means he's not, he's not making this story up. There's, there was actually, this guy existed. There was a certain rich man, a particular one, a specific man, a certain rich man. And he said he was clothed in purple and fine linen, fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar. And then, this is interesting, he said there was a certain beggar, and he gave the name. This beggar's name. So we're not talking about some made-up fable. We are actually referring to two certain people, very specific situation, as he begins to give us insight on this. And then he said, and, and, the, and the beggar's name was Lazarus, which laid at his gate full of sores. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover, the dogs came and they licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died. His name is what? Lazarus. Lazarus. The beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosoms. Now, this is very interesting. Remember, this is a situation that took place before Jesus uh, was born and before Jesus had died. And you've got to understand what happened. The, the hell was divided up into two compartments. And between the bottom part and the top part was this great gulf, which kept people from crossing over. And so the upper regions of hell was referred to as Abraham's bosoms. This is the place where all of those who were in covenant with God were there until Jesus came to set the captives free. All right? Okay, so on the other side or the lower part, of, of uh, hell was where, uh, you know, wicked men, uh, men who were not in covenant or didn't believe God, it's where they, they went, okay? All right, now, so now you understand here when he said uh, that he died and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosoms. The rich man also died and was buried and in hell. The rich man died, was buried, and in hell he lifted up his eyes. Now, I want you to count the number of times the word torment appears. He lifted up his eyes, being in torment. He seeth, and notice the senses that were working. Both of these guys are dead. But when you die, your physical body stays on the, on, on, goes back to the dust of the ground of the earth, but your spirit and soul goes with you wherever you are. If your soul didn't go, you wouldn't be able to recognize people. Your spirit and your soul. All right, now watch this. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus, in his bosoms, he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. <laughs> the nerve of this guy. And send Lazarus <laughs> that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. Now, that, that, Lazarus ain't doing that no more. <laughs> For I am tormented in this flame. And Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime, so life is over, they're now in eternity. Remember in thy lifetime, receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from hence. And then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. So he was just saying, like, look, dude, just, you know, somebody go and tell them this is all real. You know, I didn't know this was all real, but now I'm here. 
I need somebody to go warn everybody else. And we think, wow, that would be a pretty good idea, right? And there's a lot of things happen because actually when Jesus rose from the dead, these folks who were in the upper regions of Sheol got up too. The scripture says that some people in the city saw their relatives who had died walking in the city. Uh, Y'all better watch out because maybe, just maybe, maybe, just maybe, just a little bit I have, I can't prove this, you can't disprove this, but I know God's love is so strong. And maybe, just maybe before this, this rapture comes that he might just let you see somebody that was gone just at a last attempt to say this is real, get it right. All right, now watch this now. All right, we're reading the scripture, right? No, go on talking about Rem Dollar said. No, we read. We this reading one on one. <laughs> Rem Dollar ain't said nothing. We just reading. Verse twenty nine. And Abraham said unto him, They have Moses. They got the prophets. They got Creflo to him. <laughs> Let them hear them. I ain't sending nobody back from the dead. Because you know what would happen when nobody believed it. I've come from the dead to tell you, now is the time to get saved. Oh, it's a trick. You ain't from no dead. What circus you work for? They wouldn't believe it anyway. And he knew that. And he said, nay, Father, Abraham, but if one went from the dead, they will repent or change their mind. And he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. That's a strong indictment. So what are the things we see here? I'll share about four or five things we see here just in this verse of Scripture. Number one, people in hell suffer. <laughs> people in hell suffer. The rich man uses the term torment three times in, 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 the, in this parable, and Abraham used it once. And so it's clear that the rich man is in real pain, not imagined pain, not symbolic pain, he's in real pain. Number one. Number two, once you're in hell, you cannot cross over to heaven. Well, if I go to hell, I'll just, you know, change my mind and cross over. No, no, once you're in hell, you can't cross over. You have to understand something. Uh, there's nothing more permanent than you dead. <laughs> you ever heard dead as a doorknob? <laughs> That's it. That's, that's it. This is the dressing up room right now. And you only need to get dressed up one kind of way. I believe Jesus. And so what happens is, is that we have thousands of opportunities to decide our future destination. But once our physical life ends, there are no more chances. The believer enters heaven while the non-believer enters hell. And that's it. You got people who are alive today, think they're so smart, think they know everything. Oh, would love to debate with you and have these, these theological debates and all that other kind of stuff. None of that matters. Because what I'm talking about, you, every eye going to see. All we got to do is wait till you die. And you'll see I was right. And I tell you right now, I'm right. You're wrong. And we'll see. Do you think you can afford to take that chance? There is no way. I'm, I'm, my, I, I am so glad that I am ever ready. You ever heard that term? I am ever ready. I'm always ready. And that's how you do it. You get saved. You, you, you see, once you make Jesus the Lord of your life, you're good. So all of this stuff I'm talking now, you ain't, your heart don't need to be beating fast. You don't need to be, oh, Lord, I need to do this. I need to, no, you don't already did what's necessary. You have made your reservations to Holy Ghost Hotel. Hallelujah. You're all ready. But now if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, this sermon should concern you. Amen. Here's the third thing I want you to understand. People in hell are fully conscious and aware of where they are. They're conscious and they are aware of where they are. Just as a person in heaven knows where they are and how they got there, 
The person in hell will know why they are and where they are. They won't be able to say that they never had a warning and they, that, that they were never warned because they will know that they had ample opportunity to change their ways. I, I think the tormenting part, I think fire may be, it, it may be literal, it may be symbolic, but I think it's the worst thing you can think about. I think there's going to be some stuff that's a lot more tormenting than the fire. Somebody say, what could be more tormenting than the fire? Knowing that all you had to do is accept Jesus' forgiveness. That could be tormenting. Knowing that your, 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 your book was in, your name was in the Lamb's book of life, but because you never made Jesus the Lord of your life, it was wiped out. That's tormenting. And all of the chances you have. Tonight's another chance. You're on the stream right now, and you could turn it off because you're, you're freaking out. I don't want to hear this. Or you could pay attention to me and make some, some the, the choice of your life. The, the, the only choice that matters in your life right now is have you made Jesus your Lord and personal Savior? That's big. Now look at Revelations chapter 20. Revelations chapter 20. Now this is, I could preach an hour on what I'm about to show you, but... I, I don't have time. This is new believers for people to get it, get some understanding, get some scriptures, and, and go on. We can get deep in it a little bit later. But look at Revelation 20, verse 11. He said, I saw a great white throne. Now, before I go home, go, go, go home. Before I go on, the great white throne is just simply, the, it's a judgment of non-believers. Okay, so everybody's going to die, Right? And then there are going to be two resurrections. There's going to be the resurrection of those believers. And, you know, you'll be clothed and meet Jesus in the air. And then the second resurrection, you don't want to be a part of that. That second resurrection from the dead is where non-believers are going to be judged and, and you know, sentenced. And this is this, this judgment right here. All right, now listen to this about this judgment uh, this is the judgment of non-believers uh, who will be at this judgment seat, everyone who has rejected God's offer of forgiveness through Jesus Christ. Everybody that's rejected God's offer uh, of forgiveness through Jesus Christ, you will be at this place. The number of people that have rejected that offer. Jesus is saying, I was the ransom. I paid the price for you to be free. The unbeliever said, I don't want it. The unbeliever said, I don't believe. They're going to be at this judgment. So why are they there? Because they did not believe in Jesus. Look at John 3, 18. They did not believe in Jesus. And the people who don't believe in Jesus and didn't receive what Jesus uh, had made ready for them, are, they will be at this judgment seat. This is going to happen. And, and, and uh, don't miss Sunday, because Sunday I'm going to talk to you about the signs of the time. I'm going to talk to you about everything that's happening right now and literally show you, I'll go back, I think in some cases, 50 years and show you how it constantly progressed to where we are right now. And, and the Bible prophesies that that generation will see the return of the Lord. We have not known what that generation or who that generation was, but we pretty much know it's this one. It's this one. He said here, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the, in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So he's condemned already. It, what a sad day. What a sad day to see the consequences of not believing. You know, people poke fun at preachers and all that other kind of stuff. And later on, you're going to find out that the most important job on the planet But they don't know it now. They don't know it now. God has an intent, and we have a decision. And the truth is that God never intended for any person to go to hell. He didn't even create it for that. Wow. But if you're going to follow the devil, okay, you're going to follow him straight to hell. Look at Matthew 25, 41. That place is reserved for Satan and his demons. God does everything he can to keep us out of hell, but he has also given us the ability to decide and to make a decision. 
In verse 41, he says, Then shall he say unto, unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Wow. If you want to go to heaven, real simple, put your faith in Christ. But if you reject Christ, then you have also made a choice for all eternity. You have a right to choose life. Hell is a real place. As I said tonight, this sermon's not for believers, but you can take good notes to use it when you want to minister to somebody who's not a believer. But if you happen to be here tonight and you don't believe, if you happen to be on the stream tonight and you're not a believer, and you have gotten caught up in the, in the affairs of the world, you have gotten caught up in the norms and the value systems of this world, you have subjected your life to the comments of fools on social media. You have given up your peace over and over and over again. You have let Satan, the accuser of the brethren, deceive you into thinking that there is no God and that there is no Jesus. And you keep forgetting that everybody is going to die one day. And that includes you, and that includes me. Now, I made Jesus the Lord of my life. Yeah, but what if heaven's not real? I still lived a good life. But for those of you who didn't make Jesus the Lord of your life, my question is, what if hell's real? Can you afford to take that risk? I'm not doing that. He's coming back. We've got to believe in Jesus. And, and notice the attack on Jesus. Notice the attack on Jesus. There's a whole group of people saying Jesus doesn't exist. Oh, don't serve Jesus because he's a white man. Don't get mad at God because the Roman Catholic Church decided to, ha to have a model, a white curly-haired model, European model, to model the first picture of Jesus. God didn't have nothing to do with that. You want to know who he was, you need to read the Bible carefully and quit looking at that little picture. I guarantee you Jesus didn't look like that, had his curl. Is that, that picture got that, that dude's hair curl better than some? I it, it, it. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Sitting up there with his little cherry cheeks and that ain't what the Bible describes Jesus as. You that white, that close to the equator? This is real. And there's some crazy stuff going on in the world. Don't get caught up in this crazy. Don't get caught up in this crazy. There's a whole nother type of language going on in this world. There's a level of acceptance that accepts everything that's evil and everything that's wicked. And, and there's a norms and value system that says if, if, there's a, if there's more people over here to the left that says it's okay, then it's got to be okay everywhere. And I'm back in the Word. I'm going to stick with the Word. I'm going to stick with the Word. I'm going to stick to the Word. Eternity is a long... Look, watch this. Watch, watch what I just said. I'm, I'm going to say something that's, that's kind of an oxymoron. Eternity is a long time, but eternity is not time. We're in time right now. When you die, you step out of time into eternity where there is no more time. All I know is the eternity is too long to make the wrong decision right now. It's too long. I can't be, <laughs> I can't be dying realizing that the Bible was right and get up there and like, I'm in hell like, oh, my bad. You is bad. It's better than what you ever thought. I'm not doing that. I believe in Jesus. I receive him as my Lord and personal Savior. And everything else about your life after that point, 
God got it. He'll give you the Holy Spirit. He's going to help you to develop. He's going to help you to grow. He's going to help you to mature. Just get saved. And the Lord will help you out of all that other stuff. And it, it, listen, it, it's like a baby. Just push the baby out. <laughs> Once he get out, we can teach him how to walk. We can teach him how to talk. We can do all that kind of stuff. Same way born again. Just get saved. He'll teach you how to walk. He'll teach you how to talk. He'll teach you how to love. He'll teach you how to forgive. He'll teach you how to live. But don't you get this attitude of, oh, because I'm, I, I, I walk, I'm walking, but I fall down every now and then. Oh, I'm going to hell. See, people have done that. And they put that fear on people who were already ready. And I want to take that fear away from you. You're born again. You made Jesus Lord of your life. You are a believer. If you die today, you are in heaven, praise God. But if you've never made Jesus Lord of your life and you hate him and you, I, 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 I've been there, people who cussed him out. I lost it one time though, boy. I had to, Jesus had to help me. Man, this dude talking about, well, I think Jesus is nothing but an a-hole. And I'm like, who? I, 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 I said, I said, who you think you are? Stupid. You said, little stupid self. You don't even know nothing. You're going to call my Lord. Or they, and, I, and the Lord had to, I, I, I almost got his demon on me. What you did? I, I couldn't believe he just said that. And I didn't know how bad it bothered me until he said that. You're talking about my Jesus. You're talking about somebody I know, somebody I talk to every day, somebody that healed me, somebody that delivered me, somebody that died for me, somebody that was raised up from the dead for me, somebody that's coming back for me. We are in this world, but we're not of this world. We are citizens of the kingdom of God. We are aliens on this earth. They're looking for some extraterrestrial. There you go. The day you got born again, Jesus added the extra. He added the super to the natural. And you'll never be the same again. So, next Wednesday, I'll let you in on heaven. You're going to like it. I'll let you in on what you can expect when you close your eyes to time and wake up to eternity. And, and you'll understand what he meant. He said, when you see these things coming, look up. Your redemption draweth nigh. I'm looking up. I'm looking up. I'm looking up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I believe the Lord just wanted me to take the next two weeks and get your attention. He coming back. The earth can't take too much more sin. Have you, have you read the Bible? Every time sin was crazy, ridiculously, abundantly in earth, it couldn't take too much more. The last time was when, when the earth, when it flooded. And the Bible says, as in the days of Noah, so likewise will be in these days. He's coming. God is good. Are you ready? Those of you at home, are you ready? If you're not, you can get ready right now. I'm going to pray this simple prayer. And if you'll pray this prayer after me, you will step from darkness into the marvelous light as you accept the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. Pray this simple prayer after me. Father, I come before you now. I realize that I was a sinner. But right now, I repent of all my sins. I accept your forgiveness. And I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Dear Jesus, come into my heart. So by faith, I declare that I am saved. I believe, Jesus, 
that you are the Son of God and that today you live in me. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that simple prayer with me tonight, you're saved. Doesn't it, it doesn't require extra cartwheels. Andre Crouch used to sing, you, don't, you sing a song, you don't have to jump no pews, run down no aisles, no chill has to go down your spine, but you know that you've been born again. And I'm telling you, I, I'm thinking about Andre because somebody sent me a teaching when I was in Portland, Oregon, 1995, and Andre Crouch was sitting right there on the, on the front row, and the word of the Lord came to him, and, and, and I had a chance to minister to that man, and, and uh, we became friends. And, and I'm telling you, God used him in a mighty way. He's not on the earth anymore. He's in eternity. Thanking God he made that decision. And I thank God for you who made that decision. Hey, if you're online and you just got born again, go to the comment section and let everybody know, I just got saved. If you're here with us at Bible study tonight and you just got born again, congratulations to you and welcome to the biggest gang on the planet, man. Welcome to the biggest gang on the planet. Amen. Now, if you're online and you're not here tonight, if you'll just text the keywords, I'm saved, that's one word, to 51555. Provide your name and email address, and we'll send you a free ebook as a gift to you today. Uh, we're so grateful and thankful for our time together tonight. And so let's go ahead and complete our worship as we uh, give our gifts before the Lord. And isn't that awesome that you understand that you're giving tonight not to try to get God to do something, but you're giving tonight because of what God has already done, for what he's already done. So if you need an offering envelope, if you lift your hands up, the ushers will give you an offering envelope if you need one. If you're online and you're giving through text, you can just text World Changers space in the amount to 74483, or you can call that number on your screen, 1-866-477-7683. You can also, if you're at home or anywhere, mail if you still mail things. You can mail it to 2500 Burdett Road, College Park, Georgia. Or if you're in front of the computer, you can go to worldchanges.org or creflodollarministries.org, and you can give online and also use your PayPal online. Here live, if you'd like to hit that QR code, it will take you directly to the text, and you just put the amount in and match in. And so we are providing avenues for both people who are alive, live, and want to be here at church and those who are at home and still working to get here. So it's a powerful, powerful thing, and we are so very, very excited. And I tell you what, we owe the devil a butt kicking. You do not interrupt us for no 16 months and don't think you're going to have to pay for it. You do understand that. You know there's a reckoning that's got to take place, amen? There's a reckoning got to take place, and we got to praise the Lord like we out of our mind, amen? We got we to gotta, we gotta let him know. You, you, you don't ever want to do this no more. Because we don't come back bitter, we come back better. In the name of Jesus, you don't come back bitter, come back better. Praise God. Amen. Well, ushers, if you want to go ahead and receive this offering, this is our worship that we give to God. Those of you go, uh, who are at home, go ahead and hit those buttons. And uh, I really cannot wait. I started a series on heaven a while back before the pandemic hit. I never did finish it, so I cannot wait. This is going to be, we're going to spend a little bit more time on heaven because it's the place I want you to get excited about. And I want you to understand where your born again relatives are. Amen. Now, I know some people try to wiggle it out. Well, what about if you had a relative and they died and they never did get saved? Then hell. I hate to say that, but somebody got to tell you the truth. <laughs> I mean, I got some people in my family, they in hell. I tried to get them saved. I don't want to get saved. I don't want to have nothing of Jesus. I'm like, I won't see you no more. <laughs> we can do a lot right now today just by being a witness to what Jesus has said in his word. And whether people believe it or not, they have a chance. We water. We plant, 
God gives the increase. You don't hang around trying to get the increase. We water plant and God gives the increase. Amen. Well, I think, praise God, that's the end of Bible study tonight. I'm going to ask... Uh, I'm going to ask Pastor Ken to come on out and do what we, we got to do. And I will see y'all on Sunday as we look at the signs of the time.